you can turn in your Bible to the book of Psalms, chapter 41. We'll try to read a few scriptures there and uh, make a few comments on the, on the Word. Good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. We're thankful to see one here this morning. We pray for one another as, uh, as we leave this place and as we go out in the world and as we have the, the world of faith, just remember one another here as we live each day and pray for one another. In the book of Psalms, uh, for chapter 41, he's, he's talking uh, here first of all about the poor. And uh, we, we have, we have a, a, a lot of, of uh, poor people. And uh, here he says in verse 1, Blessed is he that considers the poor. Now he's not saying blessed is the poor, but he's saying blessed is he that, that considers them. And when we consider, when we consider something, we think on it, we, we uh, uh, maybe commune with our brothers and sisters about things of people that are poor. And the, the thing poor, when we always think about it, well, he ain't got a place to live, uh, he ain't got fitting clothes to wear, and uh, he ain't got nobody to help him with this and that. And that's a poor, and that's a fleshly poor. But listen, we need to remember those that have got high places in the government, uh, mansions that they can live in, suits that they don't ever wear hardly ever, uh, that has all the worldly things, they're poor too. And uh, they're, in a, they're in probably a worse condition than the man that has uh, not got, uh, as old saying, his two nickels to rub together. Right. And so this morning, that's what we would like to say to you this morning when he says, uh, as, he's, as he's writing here, blessed is the poor, or blessed is he that considers the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Now, right. and, and this is, this can, this can be a two-way street here with you talking about the poor, but those that consider the poor and those that try to help the poor and those that have a loving heart that goes out to the poor, uh, and those that are willing to stand on the corner of a street and, and, and holler to the poor and say, hey, you need the Lord, uh, and, 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 and tell them about their spiritual needs. And this morning, this is, this is the thing that we need to say. When we try to help those that, that the Lord leads us to help, and whether they be poor in spirit or poor in worldly things, we're blessed mm -hmm. if we this morning consider their condition and try to help them with these things. Mm -hmm. And people this morning, there's nothing, there's nothing, uh, no greater. And, and, I, and I know you see these little hungry young ones running around in and, and these television programs and all of this. And, and listen, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's an eye catcher, and it's a thing that the, the world has developed in order to. Uh, get their way with things. Mm -hmm. But listen, you don't never see uh, those millionaires and all of us sitting in these big places and all these things and the, and the, and the uh, television programs and all this thing. This poor soul don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we'll, we'll study a little bit, but you know, uh, in, the, in our scriptures, the, the, the Lord Jesus is talking about those that have the riches of this world, how hardly can one of them enter into the kingdom of God? Right. And so you, you look at them and, and you say, well, they've got all of this. Well, yeah, they have. They've got their rewards while they're here. Mm -hmm. But listen, that the, the, the poor man that's, that's destitute without clothing, without food, and without shelter, listen, he needs immediate help. But listen, in all in all, when all is said and done, the man that is without clothing and without shoes and without uh, a house to live in will be probably better off than the man with the riches. Mm -hmm. Because he, Jesus said to them, he said, it's harder for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God 
than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And I've heard stories about the eye of a needle and all this. But regardless of what the story is or what Jesus, how he was saying this, he's saying this this morning, that it's difficult. It's mind your, it, impossible. And he says, the disciples asked him, he said, well, how can this be? He said, it is, it is impossible with man. Yeah. But with the Lord, all is all is possible. Amen. And so it is possible for that rich man to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and forget about his worldly things and his worldly gods and, and enter into the kingdom of heaven. But the thing of it is here, we need to understand this. If, if we have the opportunity to either help the poor with the, out the clothing or the poor that's richest that can be, we're blessed. And that's what Jesus is encouraging us and his disciples and what uh, the psalmist here is, is uh, 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 trying to in, uh, emphasize here. That is our, that is our, that should be our desire this morning is to consider these people. And right. so Jesus says here uh, uh, that the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive and he shall be blessed upon the earth and thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemy. So in, in, the, in the book of Luke, I want to read to you just a little bit this morning. Uh, I believe it's Luke, maybe it's Mark. Let me, let me look and see. Luke 4, I think it is. Let me make sure that I got this right. Luke 4, 16. Luke 4, 16. And he, uh, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recover, recovering of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister, sat down, and the eyes of all of them were, were in the synagogue, were fast upon him. And so we see here is the, here is the medicine, here is the uh, antidote for the poor, if Amen. you would. But he says, this, here to preach the gospel, to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance. So these things we know that we are able to encourage people with, with the brokenhearted. Even this morning, Sister Joanne, we need to be much in prayer for her this morning because I know she's brokenhearted of losing her brother. And and this, this morning, uh, deliverance from captivity and recovering of sight to the blind. So all of these things is what they, that Jesus read to them, emphasizing what the poor need. Now, over in, Matt, uh, in Mark's gospel, I want to read something else to you. In Mark uh, 4, verse 3, no, I'm sorry, Mark 14, I'm sorry. Mark 14, 3. <clears throat> And he, and being in ver, uh, Mark 14, 4, uh, 3, and being in, the, in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, he said at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment and a spikener, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? Now, first of all, this morning, when you do your best to uh, consider the poor and you try to help them, listen, it's never a waste. Amen. Uh, regardless of what people say, if you hand them a little bottle of water or a little cookie or a, a package of, 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 of peanut butter 
crackers or whatever. If you can give them that, that's a whole lot better a lot of times than you give them a twenty dollar bill. Right. Because listen, a lot of times they don't they 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 appreciate that that food, but listen, they'll take that twenty dollar bill and, and a lot of the times they'll spend it for something that they don't need to spend it for. But I'm I, I'm not I'm I'm not criticizing anybody for giving money to the to the poor because they need it. But listen, here's what <clears throat> here's what here it is. Uh, and after they had to end it, and uh, he says in verse 5 of the, of the uh, 14th chapter, For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence, and have been given to the poor, and they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Amen. Why trouble ye her? Now notice, she has wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always. And so this is something this morning that the, the news medias and the television programs that want you to, to send money to them to they can take care of the poor, they don't tell you anything about, well, listen, I want you to understand before you send this, we have the poor with us always. Right. Because they're going to be there. But, and this is why here he said here uh, in verse, the latter part of 7, and when so ever... Now notice, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But be ye, but me ye have not always. She had done what she could. Amen. She has come aforehand to anoint my body and to bury to the burying. Verily I say unto you, whosoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world this also that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial to her and so what i want you to see here is this morning in in, in chapter seven he says for ye have the poor with you always and whensoever ye will ye may do them good and it's it's not it's not this thing of ever 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 poor beggar that you see uh on the road or something, you stop and help them because listen, you can't. But this is the thing I say here, whenever, when the when the Holy Spirit speaks to your soul and tells you, hey, this friend needs help or this man needs help, listen, and it, it, it happens that way. Amen. I, I know myself when we are when we're out on the roads a lot of times around the Walmart and and other places like that, you see them out there standing. But you go back the next day and you see them standing again. You see them the same ones over and over. But the thing of it is, if if the if 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 the Spirit speaks to my heart and says you need to give them, we keep a little bag or something other throw them off. But I do. I, we try to do that. But the thing of it is, you cannot you cannot continually feed the same ones over and over because listen, it's it's not. It's not doing them no good. And here he says, whenever so you will, you may do them good. So back in our lesson, again, I'm going to go back to this book of Psalms, Psalm 41. <coughs> and uh, in this right here, and he says here in verse uh, 3, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of language. And, and, and I believe he's talking about that one that considers him. And also, uh, and David was speaking of this, and David had a problem with Absalom. And, and this is why, this is what brought this, this, this writing on, because Absalom was just, a, he was a terror, and he tried to overtake uh, uh, David and to take his, uh, his kingship away from him. But he says here, uh, the, the, in verse 2, the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not deliver him into the will of his enemy. And I, I'm, I'm thinking this is, this is David and Ephraim. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of language, and thou will make all his bed in his sickness. Now, and I say, Lord, be merciful unto me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. This is Amen. David talking. My enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And you know, that's, that's a, you, don't, you, don't see, you don't hear that much this morning, but David, David was close to God. And, and he spoke to him like, I mean, in, in truth. And, and he, this was his desire to see his enemies die before him. So he says, 
And in, in verse 6, and if he comes to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. And that was the same thing over in the, in the book of, of 1 Kings, I believe it is. I want to read something to you over here this morning in 2 Kings. Uh, if you will, I'm going to turn in a hurry for you. Just want to listen, but it's fine. But I want to read. I want to read something to you this morning. Second Kings. Uh, uh, I want to find out. I can, I'm trying to find my place here. Okay, here, here in this, uh, uh, in verse 15, looking in four, an uh, Absalom, uh, in verse four of Second Samuel, five, fifteen, four. Absalom said, Moreover, O oh, that I were made judge in the land that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. And it was so that when that when any man come nigh to him to do him obedience, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him, and on his manner did Absalom do to do all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the heart of the men of Israel, and it came to pass after 40 years, and you can see Absalom was patient, and, he, and 40 years that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee let me go and pay my vows, which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebrew. For thy servant vowed a vow while I abode in Gershom, in Syria, saying, If the Lord shall bring me again indeed, Jerusalem, uh, indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he rose and went to Hermon. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. And so Absalom was David's problem from the word go. He he was right. always he was always a uh, uh, really proud of himself, and he was he was always wanting building himself up. And this is what this is the thing that David faced. So uh, uh, even in this, here you can see some of the some of the stuff that uh, that David went through. And if you read over, over in Second Samuel here, that that, uh, that Daniel, I mean, David. <clears throat> David was out in the wilderness, and he, he had him a, a few people that was with him, and the Lord blessed him, Amen. And, and David was overcome Absalom because uh, one of the, uh, the soldiers killed him and got him out of the way. And so this solved David's, uh, 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 David's problem. Of course, he, he cried for him for, for no telling how long, but anyway, he got rid of it. But now back at our lesson, I want to get back to this. And all that hate me whispered in verse 7 together against me, against me do they devise my hurts. And he's talking about his son. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, my own familiar, notice this, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. And he's talking about none other than his own son. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up that I may requite them. For by this I know that thou favorest me, because my enemy doth not turn <coughs> over me. And as far as and as for me, thou upholdest me in my integrity. Amen. And, and and this integrity is, is just completeness, sound, honesty, sincerity. And he's saying, you uphold me in this and set me before thy face forever. Blessed be the God, the Lord God of Israel from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and, and, and amen. And amen. I want you to see something here, even in this, even in this thing that David is writing. Look in, if you would, in the book of John, just a minute. I want to read you something else. John 13. And uh, you, 
know what I'm probably going to with this, but anyway, it's a, it's a, it's something that uh, that happened to Jesus in John, John 13, 18. I'll get there in a minute. Okay, in John 13, 18, I speak. Well, here in uh, uh, let, let's let's look at the. Uh, uh, Okay, look in, in verse 15, in John uh, 13, 15. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Amen. Then he said, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, Amen. but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. And this is none other than Judas Iscariot. And, and David had the same problem with his son, one that was close to him, one that he loved, and he done him the same way. Right. And here Jesus and, and, and Jesus was right there with Judas Iscariot and he he even come to him and, and kissed him and he uh, uh, betrayed him with a kiss and here he says uh, when Jesus had thus in verse 21 when Jesus had thus said said he he was troubled in spirit and testified and said verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me then the disciples looked on one another doubting of whom he spake so we see that the same thing has happened to David over here that has happened to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and David was, uh, uh, was writing some of the things that happened to him. So now in... Uh, I got uh, one more John, uh, John 12. Let's see. John 12. John, I got John 12, 7. I want to read something here to you. John 12, 7. Yeah, it, this is this is the same thing that I read to you a while ago, but it's it's a little bit different, and it's talking about Mary as she was washing Jesus' feet. Then said Jesus, well, "Let her alone against the day of my bearing. Has she done? Has she kept this? For the poor always you have with with you, but me you have not." Amen. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only but that they might see Lazarus also whom he had raised from the dead. And so again, here is these, uh, Jesus is talking to them about the poor. And the poor, those, the, those that came there, they knew about Jesus, but they were more interested in seeing Lazarus than there was Jesus because Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. Right. And so they, all of these things, all of these things that I'm trying to read to you connects with with uh, those that the, the poor people of his time and he says and and of course he's encouraging them here when he's saying to them about mary and her washing his feet and and and, and oil and uh, the oil and all this listen he said you have the the the, the poor will you always but keep in mind this that you need to remember jesus christ amen that's 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 the thing of it and uh, I, I read I, I read this and studied this because uh, you know I, I think about all of these all of this stuff all the time that these people are are, are using to to encourage people to uh, donate money and listen to people uh, a lot of it's a ripoff mm -hmm. and so uh, you need to consider this whenever you when you do this but uh, uh, that's that's the the thing of it this morning so. Even in this, uh, David, uh, David prospered, and he went on, and he went on to be king after Absalom had uh, 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 betrayed him. And so this morning, this this is our lesson for the day. Uh, I, I know I've jiggled around and said this and that, but anyway, uh, I hope that something I've read and something I pointed out to you will encourage you and help you in Amen. some way. So. Thank you this morning for listening to me uh, in this morning. Pray for us as we try to study from time to time. Thank you all.